kanalen. I dag ska vi ta upp något intressant tema. Så jag sätter över till studio. Ja, then we welcome you to another program here in uh, Family Channel. My name is Rune Fardal and I'm sitting with the Mario Frekeros. And uh, we are sitting in Strasbourg on a street restaurant, feeling the pulse of the city sort of way. Last week we, uh, no, last week, uh, yesterday we attended the uh, the Grand Chamber hearing in the Lobben case here in Strasbourg, and we will tell you a little bit about. Uh, our impression from that meeting and things that affect that meeting or this case actually. So, Marius, what was your reaction, your feeling when you get out of there yesterday when we were finished the finale? Sort of. <laughs> grand finale. Grand yeah. finale. <laughs> yeah, it's literally a grand final because uh, it's not possible to get any further in the in the legal system with regard to human rights in Europe. Yeah. Uh, so it's definitely, we're talking about a grand final. And of course, uh, yesterday was an extremely special day for a lot of people. Of course, it was an historical day. Yeah. The first day in history when a Norwegian child welfare uh, case was brought all the way to the top in Europe. Yeah. Uh, a lot of emotions going through the, to the audience, also yeah. through me. and. Uh, but um, of course, I was very happy with the with the fi with the final, to put it that way, and I was happy with the way the proceedings went. Yeah. Um, I think the the twenty judges who were there really understood that uh, Norway is actually committing very severe crimes against their own population. Yeah. So definitely, yeah, I think we we succeeded very well. We've done everything we could. Yeah. It's not up to us anymore, but um, if there is if there is some justice left in the world, we will certainly win this case. Yeah. And yeah. I truly believe in the judges that they realized uh, what's, what's at stake here. Yeah. And yeah. that we're talking about uh, <coughs> young mother and a family uh, that has uh, gone through some severe pain that is in, inimaginable yeah. for most people to understand. Because yeah. uh, uh, the, the setting <coughs> in the room was um, <coughs> the judges in front and to the to the Lobben with her lawyer and you behind in one part so there was let's say three people on to the Lobben Part. Yeah. And then on the government side, there was the uh, attorney general, mm -hmm. and he had nine other people in that group. Yeah. So that sort of show the <coughs> unbalance in power here. There is a legal f fraction saying that there should be some equality of arms, yeah. meaning equality before the law. Yeah. In this case, obviously shows that there is not. No. I mean. The government of Norway has all the resources in the world to spend on cases, yeah. to, and, and and that picture when she was sitting there by herself, yeah. whereas these nine lawyers and agents for the government, government were were close and looking at her like she was like a, she was some kind of like a something they could scare or something. Yeah. That was something that I will remember for the rest of my life because yeah. that picture was so strong. Yeah. The proof that the Norwegian government is willing to spend as much money as possible mm. to to lie to cheat yeah. and to try to get away from the violations they have committed to her and yeah. to to a lot of other families yeah. and that that should never be tolerated no. and i'm very happy to see that uh, we had coverage from international media mm. i think the judges i have faith in the judges that mm. they looked behind the the masquerade of the Norwegian uh, yeah. of the government yeah. and uh, we just have to continue to address this to the rest of the world as much as possible yeah. in order to say that enough is enough yeah. and we're fed up with this system yeah. and we're fed up with the Norwegian government lies yeah. it's not the best system in the world no. we have a lot of things to learn from other countries mm. and we have to stop believe that Norway with a population of 5 million people um, can uh, overcome the rest of the world with 7.5 billion people. Yeah. We have to be more humble. Yeah. And we have to stop moralize 
about others when we are truly violating the rights within our own system. Yeah. Because I see the uh, Norwegian government, they have uh, tried to sell the childcare system that we have in Norway yeah. to a lot of other countries. Mm -hmm. and, and it sort of looked like yeah. a bribe <laughs> situation where they give a lot, they, there are millions of euros going into that system for every country and then exactly. if you don't follow us or if you talk against us or whatever we will withdraw funds exactly there, there is a dynamic there we, we saw that in the Polish case mm -hmm. about the Silja case yeah. uh, asking yeah. for asylum yeah. and where they obviously use money mm -hmm. to to Certainly. block that yeah. that one the interesting part is I met with some high-ranking officials just before the Grand Chamber yeah. opening and they could tell me that uh, Romania and Bulgaria, yeah. two of the countries who I know are in support of our point of view of the yeah. case, yeah. Uh, were approached by Norwegian officials yeah. where the Norwegian officials told them that if you intervene on behalf of Mrs. Laban, yeah. Uh, we will withdraw their, our fundings to your countries. To yeah. And Bulgaria obviously did not, uh, was not affected because they intervened. Yeah. One of four countries who, who truly intervened yeah. in the yeah. case on our behalf. Yeah. But Romania did not. No. And that surprised me a little bit because yeah. in 2016, when you go back and remember the Bunari case, yeah. Yeah. that was Romanian. Uh, that was Romanian yeah. uh, Norwegians. Yeah. And Romania established a huge support throughout the yeah. world yeah. Uh, in order to, to, to support that family. Yeah. So, and I still believe the Romanian people and the Romanian government support uh, the Norwegians who are suffering from the same violations. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it remains to see if uh, Norway actually succeeded in getting Romania up from the list. Yeah. But if we, we see they are using a lot of funding yeah. to try to win in the court of human rights mm -hmm. and they for do. them it's more important to win than actually to stop the violation of human rights yeah which is justice being done yeah right? yeah you're right and i talked to a member of the european parliament mm. just hours before the session opened as well yeah. and he said the same thing that he was not afraid that if if there were some if there was some justice in that court building, yeah, yeah. he was not afraid of the outcome. No. But what he was afraid of was yeah. that Norway, where the officials from Norway had managed to lob lobbying yeah. uh, throughout Europe yeah. uh, with their fundings. Yeah. And that concerns me a lot as well, that we, we think we can pay off all these countries yeah. with our um, oil money and oil and gas money. Yeah. And of course, that causes a lot of concern that we, 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 we're not in control of what's going on at the top levels. No. no. But that also show the fear, the desperation mm -hmm. for a verdict against Norway. <coughs> yeah, of course. So if this Loven case goes against Norway, which, well, what shall we say, we, we got the feeling in the court yesterday yeah, we truly that... truly hope so, of course. It, it was a good feeling when it we sat there. It was a great there. feeling, yeah. of course. We, we felt this, there was a sense of feeling of justice in, within that building. Yeah. Yeah. That you can see Mrs. Lovin yeah. on, on, on the one side yeah. and this army of lawyers and soldiers <laughs> yeah. on the other side. Yeah. <coughs> you know, you, you had the nine judges, you had the nine lawyers and yeah. representatives on behalf of the government. Yeah. But in, in addition to that, yeah. you had more than 100 people or delegates from the from public the side of Norway. Public side of judges, yeah. members of the boards, yeah. and even some government I, I think there was so. about 20 judges yeah. there, and there was from this uh, uh, board. Um, yeah, this welfare so county, board, yeah. county yeah, board. The county board. Yeah. Uh, they have the top uh, boss the top, was there, yeah, and yeah. a lot of delegates, and there was other from the Norwegian um, officials yeah. there. And, and that's so... Uh, that they take case, they take the case serious because this can sir. really yeah. hit them bad if if she win now. Keep in mind that we have managed uh, the Norwegian <coughs> population has managed to put pressure upon the Norwegian government within yeah. the European Parliament. Yeah. And last summer the European Council of Europe, yeah. uh, so-called PACE, yeah. Parliamentary Assembly of uh, the Council of Europe, yeah. 
uh, drafted a resolution against Norway with 43 to two votes. Uh, we have seen BBC has been there, yeah. lots of international news has been to Norway, yeah. Yeah. and so on. So we, we, we certainly see that uh, Norway is under severe pressure. Yeah. And keep in mind that Norway was also convicted in the European Court only a little more than a month ago. Yeah. That was so, the Janssen, <coughs> Janssen case. versus Norway, yeah. which was, yeah. was a unanimous case. Yeah. And uh, so the pressure is still on Norway. But you you, you heard what the gov the agent of the government said yesterday that we don't we truly disagree with the criticism. Yeah. And we really don't care. But yeah. what we care about is to have the court to back off. Yeah. We want to have our violations. It, it was uh, actually that they saying because. They they say we have a good system in Norway. Not only good, we don't, the best, the best, the best, and, system. and we don't need you to interfere. That's what actually they said, and, and that's maybe not so smart to say in that room, <laughs> in that it's, court. Uh, we, the we, we, the I think we were. I think we witnessed yesterday that the notion of arrogance reached another, a new yeah, level, a new, a new level. top level. Yeah. Can you imagine that a guy, uh, a, a state attorney from Norway, mm. coming into the Grand Chamber, looking to the 20 judges and saying, hey guys, back off. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want you to interfere yeah. with our violations. Th that and is, you were not uh, in position to yeah. do that. Yeah. He said that. Yeah. He said that we will handle this by ourselves. Yeah. So I can only imagine that these judges must have been like totally shocked. That, that, uh, that must have been experienced at a new level of arrogance mm -hmm. from the Norwegian government yeah. side. Um, because I, I have seen uh, your friend in the parliament in, in um, EU, Mr. Thomas Tsikovsky. He actually sent a letter to the Norwegian uh, prime minister. Several times. Several times. and. They don't even answer him. No, that, that's even, true even the, the arrogance. Even the this. even the president of the Czech Republic yeah. brought the a personal yeah, letter right. to our former minister of child affairs. Yeah, and uh, he he was responded. But yeah. can you imagine the response? Uh, it was drafted by a, a clerk, a clerk <laughs> yeah. uh, or a political advisor, yeah. uh, saying that, dear president of the Czech Republic. <laughs> Uh, I refer to your letter. Unfortunately, we cannot help you to uh, get the children back to the Czech Republic, but we can definitely provide you with a leaflet of the Norwegian Barnavan in English. Yeah. yeah. You see? It's like. <coughs> that it's, is it's, the same arrogance. It says so much about the system. And I think, yeah. the, I think this, the national society is <coughs> truly fed up with arrogance. Yeah. I mean, we cannot pretend that we are. An isolated part of the world which are dominated in the world picture I and mean, we are only uh, we don't even count of promillers of the world's population yeah. but still we tend to believe that we will be the world police or the yeah. number one and as the they, they they front Norway the government front Norway as the moral police yeah, of the, the world the, of the world while they are actually the opposite where they say they are that breaking uh, the human rights we are, we have the best system in the world, and so on. Yeah. So, in my opinion, this is like, uh, it's interesting. You know, there is a huge delegation in China these yeah. days. Yeah. And, uh, and the thing is that this delegation is very busy with the violations going on in China. Yeah. Whereas they try to disclose the violations going on in Norway. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that is the typical Norwegian style. They, they don't see that. Just leave it there. Yeah, that's okay. They, they don't, what shall we say? They don't see the people. No, they don't care in about these the people. people. They, they, yeah, they, they don't care about them. If they them, had they, a minimum of empathy of Mrs. Lobben and her family, so yeah. of course they would not have met with like a bunch of lawyers and uh, tried to intimidate her and yeah. really were f confronting her with severe lies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they do everything within their power mm. uh, to avoid being convicted yeah. and they're willing to do whatever it takes to just win. to avoid that. Step on yeah. people because I, Doesn't matter. I, I see Miss uh, Loben, she, she write uh, a little bit on her Facebook 
after the um, after the event uh, mm -hmm. yesterday, and she, she for her it was very difficult, very emotional. Yeah, she was and, crying there, and it wasn't easy for her to sit there in front of all the judges, a single mother uh, with uh, with her family back home, and and feeling the pressure, mm -hmm. exactly. and there beside her, her lawyer, and on the other bench nine lawyers from Norway and and she told uh, she told us too that what they said was a lies severe about lies her. Yeah, severe lies about her and and when you when you have somebody that arrogant mm -hmm. and in that room in the grand chamber have no limit to to produce that big lies? But can you imagine how, <laughs> when they're willing to go that far in the Grand Chamber, can you yeah. imagine how it is in the domestic course in Norway? Yeah. And because in Norway, the government wins in more than 90% of the cases anyhow. Yeah. Because the judges more or less say that we tend to we have fully confidence in the... They even have huge yeah. respect for these yeah. lawyers who work for the government agency. Yeah. Yeah. We saw yesterday that, yeah. as you mentioned yourself, there yeah. was a del delegation of more than 20 judges mm. and a bunch of uh, members of the court uh, of the county boards yeah. and where did they sit next behind the the bench of the, the bench attorney of the lawyer the, from norway, from norway. Yeah. Yeah. and of course if they were objective and independent yeah. they should never be you know even they saluted the government agent yeah. when he yeah. was yeah. finished with his speech saying yeah. great work <laughs> you did great and so on so it's, uh, it's frightening to it's see that the people, people who are elected to take care of the population in norway show that arrogance against the population in norway yeah. they, they are showing they are the elite and they don't care actually about people at all i think one lady who was there a uh, norwegian lady he, she spontaneously yeah. said when she saw that huge norwegian crowd from yeah. the public side of norway that wow these are educated people yeah. who work against human rights yeah. i think yeah. that's very well said because yeah. these are people who have power, mm. uh, who are in position, and they work against their own people. Yeah. I saw, uh, I was uh, coming to the court uh, very early in the morning, and when I stood there, this delegation of the lawyers from the Norwegian uh, group come, and there was young people, most of them, probably highly educated, yeah, yeah, and course. they are used against the people in Norway. Mm -hmm. that, that is, there's something wrong here. Yeah. They, they should be fighting for the Norwegian man and woman. <coughs> but you know, it's a very conform society. Yeah. Uh, among the most conform societies in the world. Yeah. And if you want to make a career within the public sector, yeah. of course you have to stick with the loyal. You have to be loyal to the system. Loyal to the system, not to the and people. And of course, I mean, you and me probably wouldn't even have a chance to have like a <laughs> job in public Clerk sector <laughs> at all, which is fine. But yeah. it tells you know. Yeah. Because we're there to, yeah. to stick out from the crowd and say yeah. that there is something severely wrong with the system. Yeah. There is actually something wrong with the leadership because a true leadership will look for somebody who make opposition. Yeah. And at least to hear the voices mm -hmm. and check out can that be a way to think out of the box to get a better system. But they are totally closed. Close-minded is our way or the highway. Yes, and as long as you don't comply with the accepted Norwegian standards, yeah. you are an yeah. enemy of the state. Yeah. So. <coughs> yeah, then we are back again after a short break. We even freedom fighters need food sometimes. <laughs> uh, but we were talking about the uh, human rights court yesterday, Grand Chamber, Lobben case and there was actually a lot of, shall we say, people from the people, sort of. Uh, people's group. People's group mm -hmm. in, in uh, there. <coughs> and that was people who not get their bill paid, paid by the by government. The government. No, they the paid for this themselves. Yeah. They come down to Grand Chamber to give support for the Lobben case and show their engagement in, in this case. So. That, that was interesting. Very. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, we saw a group of close to 30 people coming here. Yeah. Which was quite amazing to yeah. see. Yeah. And um, as you said, they they have to fund this themselves. Yeah. Whereas the Norwegian delegation, they live at fancy hotels. Yeah. They have expensive flight tickets. Yeah. They even and probably get, salary by the state. They yeah. get they get get salaries while they're here. Mm. They have all these privileges that the people on our side can only dream about. Yeah. But still, we saw that close to 30 people showed up uh, to show the support for this case and mm. all the other cases as yeah. well. So, and that is really moving to see that people are willing to stand up and even travel far support. to support. So that's really important. I, I think it was noticed there in the court system too that mm -hmm. so many civilians, to put Absolutely. it like that, mm -hmm. come to visit and follow. Uh, the Loban case and support uh, to the Loban in, in her case mm -hmm. because th this, but, uh, yeah. this happening yesterday that is actually <coughs> a historic happening certainly is. that will go down in the history books forever mm -hmm. that the Norwegian was the Norwegian government was on trial in the Grand Chamber in the European Court of Human Rights and a huge delegation <laughs> actually enormous public uh, delegation was there. Yeah, absolutely. So, <coughs> and we got support from others as well. I talked yeah. to some Ukrainian lawyers coming from Kiev. Yeah. And they were impressed with the fact that lots of civilians showed up, mm. whereas they were shocked to see so many people from the Norwegian delegation. So they yeah. were they were asking rhetorically, how, how much money do Norway Spend on this case. Spend you know? on this case. <laughs> yeah, as if you say about 100 people from the Norwegian delegation, from uh, from Norwegian government, was there, paid by the Norwegian taxpayers. Let, taxpayers. Let's say each one with the tickets, hotel uh, salaries. Let's say 25,000 for every each one. In average, Hundred. Uh, that's two and a half million. Yeah. Just to come down and to and observe and to try to, to be there. frighten the frighten that one little one lady little sitting, sitting there alone. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That give you some thinking. Gives you some really scary sp special thoughts, I think. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's scary, and um, but it proves that. Uh, they are willing to go all the way. Going all the way. And we have seen that in so many other cases as well. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> I mean, this interview will be broadcasted or it will be sent to India. Yeah. India is, uh, or the Indians are more and more interested in what's going on in Norway. Yeah. And you can reach. They, they are affected by this. Because they've been affected by themselves. Yeah. Slovakia yeah. was there yesterday with the TV. Yeah. And as the reporter said, Mm. Uh, that we are also affected by the Norwegian yeah. system yeah. and we don't get any funds from Norway so we no. might as well stand up for our rights <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. so in general I think that um, thanks to TV and thanks to the web it's uh, that it's possible to broadcast mobilize and broadcast yeah. on social media I think we can um, we are able and we are Erased in the process opinion. to 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 reach a lot of people with our message yeah. Yeah. So that's that's super. Yeah. So uh, now it's yesterday it was over. Mm -hmm. Now we sit here on a street yeah. restaurant in uh, Strasbourg. Strasbourg, feeling the pulse of the life. So yeah. The city is a very interesting city with narrow streets and big cathedral. Beautiful city. Beautiful city and good food actually too. So now it's uh, just to. Wind up this session and move on to the another the next one. Yeah. yeah. Now um, there are a lot of other cases, yeah. and, and actually the Human Rights Court is holding. Is it nine cases now, waiting for the outcome of the Loban case now? Most likely, yes. Most likely mm -hmm. that. And so if if the Loban case goes against Norway, it will also set the standard for. The other nine cases against <coughs> the Wiesen Barnevane. Not only for the nine cases, but for the system in general. Yeah, yeah, probably. So we're talking yeah. about lots of cases. Yeah. Because what this case actually 
proves is, and if we are successful with, with having Norway convicted for a violation, is that yeah. of course uh, there's something severely wrong with the system. Yeah, yeah. So, and that was actually stated in the previous judgment, Janssen versus Norway as well. Yeah. That Norway is not really complying with the human rights standards. No, no. And, um, but the problem is that Norway is way up there, yeah. and more or less like a little bit isolated from the rest of Europe. Yeah. And uh, they don't comply with the, with the repair mechanism, meaning that no. even when they are convicted, yeah. they seem to ignore these convictions. Yeah. And that's, you Serious. keep in mind what the judge from Iceland yeah. Addressed to the Norwegian government yesterday, he yeah. said that yeah. in, to say it very frankly and to say it very, to rephrase what he said, yeah. he said that if you're going to be convicted, yeah. will you still not consider you are convicted? Yeah. I mean, he said that do you care, yeah. do you really care. Yeah. And I think keep in mind that three there were three judges yesterday who yeah. raised some very Christians. specific questions yeah. to yeah. the to the Norwegian government. Mm -hmm. And they were all addressed to the government. Yeah. And all of these three questions, yeah. they more or less summarize the problems that we're coping with on an everyday yeah. basis. Yeah. Yeah. The first question is why did this <coughs> midwife yeah. who supported the mom, why yeah. did she disappear when she supported her? Yeah. yeah. And which is an Excellent question yeah. because it proves that the people who are supporting the the mother the, yeah. or, or the families the family, or the yeah. or the people who are fighting against the government, yeah. they s tend to disappear. Disappear yeah. if they say something good for the yeah. for the mother or the child, and that's, they <coughs> disappear. And that they actually is something that Indian media has uh, drawn a lot of attention to in that yeah. North Sea divers case yeah. where all these people who supported the divers yeah. they more or less disappeared or they died on a very convenient basis for yeah. the government yeah. you see yeah. and the same happened in the Lubbock case yeah. that the midwife that was supporting her yeah. disappeared she disappeared what happened she her? wasn't important no. so, so, so the they, system got, they got rid of her they, they're controlling all the information and the second yeah. question that was raised was that how was this interference, I mean, taking the child, yeah. how was it done? Yeah. And it, you can not imagine how brutal that is. Yeah. You just go in, to, um, go in, grab the baby, yeah. and just take the baby and say to the mother, you have 10 minutes to pack your things yeah. and you have to leave from here. Then yeah. she was at the mother home. They actually took the child and told the mother, get out of here. Yeah. And the third question, as I told you, addressed by the Icelandic judge, yeah. saying that, do you really care about being, uh, being convicted in this yeah. court? Yeah. So we are And he didn't actually answer the question. No, he didn't answer at all. He started talking about <laughs> exactly, something else yeah. and Sorry. how perfect the system is. <laughs> yeah. and you can have more brochures from us. That's what he actually said. Yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. <laughs> Scary. Scary. So, um, it's an arrogance. It's arrogance. It's so they, much they, arrogance. They're not able to see, be humble mm -hmm. and, and take it from there. That uh, You know, all these international protests Exactly. It doesn't exist for them. They think they can pay their way out of it. Huh? And it was so funny because I <laughs> talked to the other French lawyer who was there yesterday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she was so shocked. She was sitting next to me. Yeah. She's working with Gregory. Yeah. And she said in like a French English accent yeah. that she's just spontaneously said that oh that that Norwegian lawyer is so arrogant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you see, it was very... So I think yeah. they were shocked. Yeah. And the Ukrainian lawyers said the same yeah. thing. Yeah. They were amazed by his arrogancy. Yeah. How it's possible to be there in front of 20 of the highest ranking judges in Europe yeah. saying that, yeah. hey guys, I'm the king. Yeah. And just leave me I and my from government. Norway. Stay away from us. <laughs> we have the best system anyhow. <laughs> it so, is crazy, it is crazy. And it was addressed in Dog Brothers as well, you saw that. Yeah. And Dog Brother has, I have to credit Dog Brother for, yeah. for being on the people's side in this yeah. case, definitely. Yeah. And you saw what was stated there on the front page yesterday in yeah. Dog Brother yeah. where they said that Norway asked the European court to back off. Back off. Yeah. Yeah. That says it all. That says it all. And that's actually what the Norwegian lawyer was doing. Oh, it's, uh, so. it's, uh, 
crazy. It's so uh, we certainly don't make many international friends if we want to keep up with these guys in the, in the agent system. So That's for sure. But it reminds me a little bit about when I attended a human rights conference in Brussels in the European Parliament mm. back in 2015. Yeah. And where the where the Norwegian EU ambassador mm. who is stationed in Brussels was invited. And he more or less said the same thing to the to the audience saying that hey Marius is he's a crazy guy. Uh, we have the best system in the world. Mm don't care and the Bulgarian parliament remember yeah. just raised up with his jacket huge guys like you were so full of shit <laughs> so, <laughs> so. But, but that is some um, another interesting story in this how they treat people because yeah. we see how they treat critics critics in Norway mm -hmm. they report them to police they intimidate them they try to scare them mm -hmm. yeah. and they sort of block them out of everything and that is Personally, that is the Norwegian democracy. Personally, they have harassed me for yeah. 10 years. I yeah. mean, they have threatened to sell my house for 11 or 12 times. Yeah. Um, you know, they just took my license without any legal approval or anything. Yeah. They yeah. just took it from them. And they will never give it back anyhow. No. Uh, I don't care anyhow because <laughs> it's not really important anymore. But You can still <laughs> proceed <laughs> I can still the human rights course. Work here we anyway. don't need them. Yeah. So that's uh, so you know it's uh, it's it's just hilarious to see and uh, yeah so it's uh, I, I think there is a revolution yeah, I have in the show, making yeah, because they, they you know they do everything they can yeah. to to get rid of me you know yeah, yeah. and I know they try to get rid of you as well yeah, so yeah. this is this is this is nice it actually says expert on the on the badge <laughs> yeah. can you see this yeah. is my greetings to the Norwegian government yeah. yeah. So of course I have the support in Europe. Yeah. So, yeah. but of course they they really and keep in mind that one of the ladies who were there yesterday, yeah. uh, paid by the government uh, on the government expense, this yeah. uh, Pernille Patterson Smith, yeah, uh, who yeah, is in she charge. Have, she has reported us. To she police. reported us to the police you because to police? we we criticized the system on yeah. social media. Yeah. And you remember what was said in the charges she brought? Yeah, that we had too many friends on Facebook. Yeah. So we were that like was a negative. <laughs> we we had too many connections out connections there. Connections out there. Yeah. That's that's the reason why she reported us to police. Yeah. But uh, I I myself have so, been so reported. much for freedom of speech, huh? Yeah, crazy, crazy. But I see they they cancel this um, reports or this. Uh, accusations every time in the system so actually we are winning all the time and that must be frustrated yeah but us. keep in mind how much resources they try yeah. to yeah. spend to get rid of the people Critics. they to try to improve the system yeah. oh that's uh, crazy so it's um, yeah it's it's funny thank you you can take a look at it it's really funny it's okay yeah. Okay, uh, I think we got through most of the subjects regarding yeah. yesterday. Yeah, there will be a lot of follow-up on this one. I am quite sure. We we'll are be. just uh, seeing the what we have to do when we get back home yeah. is to ask for to to have. To, to make a review of the all the expenses that the government yeah because that has, that is has put in this in just this case that is this case uh, alone because re it's there the isn't a pit put a big question about the expenses or the, the resources they put into this yeah because they uh, just spend the people's money yeah. against the people yeah. it's horrible okay then you have heard the day after talk about the uh, Grand Chamber hearing here in Strasbourg, uh, the 17th, today is the 18th. We are sitting on the restaurant here in the beautiful city and with the life around us, uh, I'm sure you can hear. And uh, memorizing, thinking about some of the experiences that we had yesterday uh, in the human rights course. And to all people out there in the world, uh, it's about the time to open your eyes and see what the Norwegian government is actually doing and not what they are saying because what they say is not what is done in the Norwegian 
uh, child welfare system. They say one thing, it's, it's actually just like the court yesterday. The lawyer from the uh, Norwegian government, he said one thing, but what is really happening is totally different. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. If you stand, if you stand trial for murder, of course you don't want to admit that you committed you a somebody. crime. Yeah? Yeah. That's exactly what it's saying. Okay, that should round up the talk we had today. Yeah. And uh, we will keep up the fighting. We will uh, inform you, the public, everywhere in the world, what is going, really going on in Norway. And this fight isn't over. No, it hasn't. Until it's over. It has and barely started. Uh, we are just starting. Okay, goodbye from us here in Salzburg, and we will soon be back with more for you about the Norwegian tracker system, the so-called Barnevac.